today's video, I will go over the spectrum of consciousness, a model by Ken Wilber to give us a framework for healing trauma and spiritual growth. This radically changed my awakening journey. It gave me new insight on the different levels of consciousness that we have. And I just want to share this with you. Okay. I have read this book, No Boundaries, one time, two time, three times. You can tell it's got extra love to it. And this just hooked me. It really sat with me. Now, what I will say, because I want to bring this model up, is that the premise in this work is when we heal trauma, we are looking at the split, the separation from external stimuli and internal emotions. So you've actually created yourself off this split. And a lot of this work just has to do with you know, disidentifying from what you've currently been in and who you've currently been to identify with a larger, um, more understanding, like more encompassing individual. So it's just being a very well-rounded individual at the end of the day, right? To be loving and caring, but still be strong and stern. Um, it's it's about growing your identity and connecting to this universal, uh, unitive consciousness state. Okay, so I really hope that this model can give you the spark and the excitement that it gave to me. Um, because why not? Okay, so when we look at this, I'm going to bring this up right now. I want you to see this split and this boundary line which we have created. Now, what Ken Wilber has done for us is he's given us to the left-hand side the different therapies that we can utilize on each level. I'm going to say right now that I think you can use every therapy at any level. Okay, we're going from the existential all the way to more of the tantric, um, Eastern teachings, and uh, how cool is this, right? So if we look at the therapies, then I want you to move over, and I just want you to look at the different levels. We have the persona level, the ego level, the total organism, this transpersonal band, which sits right in the middle of unitive consciousness or unity consciousness. And what we are to do in this, I'm going to make this video, try and make it as simple as possible, is we are to uh, really dissolve this boundary line between what we are and what we think that we are not, to integrate more energies to make us a, you know, more clear, crystalline, cohesive individual that can not be so shook by the things that are alien or foreign or the things that we have had to repress because of, you know, collective norms. So we want to dissolve that boundary line, integrate more energies and expand thyself. And once we go all the way down, you know, actually it's, we, we, we're kind of going in to come out. It's, it's an interesting spiritualization arc, but once we have really done the heavy, deep, dense work, then we are really transcending out of the density to just hold a greater amount of energy and love and understanding that everyone affects everyone and everything is really pieced together in a very interesting, curious way that I don't think we're all supposed to fully understand, but just to accept that you know, you affect me and I affect you. And, you know, this environment that I'm in affects the way that I produce. Like everything is very, everything just meets one another in a perfect piece. So once we hit kind of more this lower realm, the boundaries start to dissolve because we're playing now in more of a collective arena rather than the first two levels, you have your persona and your ego level, what you're doing at both of these levels, this is personal unconscious work. So you're really pulling in your personal shadows. 
your personal physicality and body. And then when you move on to the total organism and unity consciousness, this expands into more of the collective arena where we're working with archetypal motifs and different patterns and there, there's a, quite a bit to it. So I just briefly went over the entire spectrum of consciousness, but what I want to do is look at each level and just give it a little bit of love. Looking at the first level, we have the persona level and what we're looking at is the character and the attitude, the behaviors which you acquire and you have many different personas, okay? Like I know for me on the top of my head, there's probably like five personas that I take on depending on the environment that I'm in, on what I'm doing, on how I feel, on the music I'm listening to. And within each one of these different personas, they all have their own story, their own life. They have their own psychic makeup. So like they have their own shadow. And, you know, this is what I'm imagining. <laughs> I'm going to have to put the meme up right now, but it's like I have my two personalities and it's the heavy metal me and then like the cheerleader cute, you know, girl, but they have their own shadows and it's our job to really expand the identity of that heavy metal person to integrate their shadow, which they may be listening to, you know, Taylor Swift or some EDM music. So what you're doing on that persona level is you are really detaching from the persona that's keeping you feel, you know, making you feel so safe so that you can integrate the shadow, which is simply the characteristics that you have had to repress and deny because you were told that they were bad. Um, a lot of the emotions which you carried in youth. And if these were not fully accepted and honored as a child, then you likely threw it into this shadow self. So again, we are detaching from the persona or just identifying with the way that you, like really understanding how you identify with these different personas. And, and then just allowing that boundary line to slowly dissolve so that you can bring in the shadow content and when you're pulling that shadow content in, your personas are expanding and you are now identifying with the shadow, the chthonic, the primordial, you know, all of the bad and taboo traits of self. So you are changing your attitude and behavior doing this. Now, let's jump on down to the ego level. On this ego level, on this ego level, this is like where they say mind over matter and, you know, the mind controls all. And it's only because we've been made to believe and we've really been induced with this. <sighs> we've really been induced by the systems that we have to just go. Don't think about your feelings. Don't think about, um, you know, the things that the body produces. The body is disgusting and gross. And, you know, we have just disgusting bowel movements and it's like but that's still us like the body and everything that the body has that is involuntary like this is our lived experience so on this level what we are to do is kind of release the reins from needing to control and the mind having to always have to get it right. We have to have the answers. We have to know. And, you know, the mind knows all, but that's so narrowing and limiting. And the mind doesn't know all. Um, let's give the body a chance, you know, this time around. <laughs> let's let the body guide us through the process. And we have to start to, in this reducing or I should say dissolving the boundary in this is we have to identify with the body again. This is the work I do with clients. So look at my comments below if you're interested, um, specifically somatic healing. So I'm surprised that they don't, oh, it makes sense why it's in the, um, uh, total organism area. Um, the somatic work. So it's okay. It makes sense. But also yeah, again, the therapies go in each and every one. So there is that. 
uh, come with me through my mind. <laughs> so as we are kind of just letting the mind, let the mind go. We don't have to have the answers. Nothing has to be right all the time. Like the ego doesn't have to have this need to perfect or to be as chiseled as it is. Why not see what it can be as the body? Okay, what can we learn from this? And, you know, I will say as well, the body has been reduced so much that it makes sense why we are so afraid of the body and what what can come from it. But if we continue to run from our physicality, then we aren't being honest about the, you know, actual experience. And we're always going to be chasing whatever the mind's eye wants. This is why, you know, to be honest, this is why a lot of body modifications are like the hot new thing because we are wanting to maintain this crystalline image which is really just a projection from the unconscious it's just a projection from the the you know the father complex and also the mother it's <clears throat> it's there's a lot to it okay so the body has really been deemed to be this not the sacred temple that it is it's been just controlled or manipulated by fitness or it's been, you know, debilitated by not getting paid attention to. So we have to integrate the body, identify with the body, identify with this is the place that I live in right now. And this is like real deal. This is like, I can't lie about the, the food that I've been consuming. My body is showing it. The body is as real as it gets. The ego has to allow matter to have its you know, spotlight. And this is really big right now. Okay. So moving on, we are getting into the total organism and this is right before we get, you know, these boundary lines are blurred. So what we want to do in this, looking at the total organism, this is like your entirety, the mind and the body as one. And what we want to do is integrate the environment because for some reason we think that our environment is only you know, it is not a part of us and it does its own thing, but we are deeply, deeply, like we can learn so much from the environment. So in this, with the total organism, what we are to do is just, again, detach from, oh, this is my physical body and this is my mind. We have to detach from this and allow the environment to be a part of us as well. So we are more than just the mind and body, we are the environment. Now with this, these three levels, I want to emphasize that what Ken Wilber says is that we have to go from one to another to another, and you can't, you know, you can't be spiritual, um, you, you can't reach unity consciousness if you haven't done the others. And Meh, yes, no, yes, no. I mean, to be honest, I feel as though like you do reach a certain point psychologically where you're going up the spiral. And once you get to this point, you're hanging on the spiral. And there's just a knowing when you're there that if I am to root myself right now in this place, that means that I have to continue the work. I have to detach from the old life that I had. And I have to really plant myself into this place because I know what is about to unfold in a weird hands-off detached way that I can, I'm only progressing. I'm only going up. And he does say that you can, when, once you continue your, your work and you reach a certain level, you can always go back down and in, but you can't go up. So yes, I do agree. But also I, I'm very feminine with my work and I feel as though, especially with the body, I feel as though you can kind of tap into these different states of consciousness, maybe not so much levels, but I feel as though you could tap, tap into these different states, right? Like if you've ever had a moment where you're just walking and you get this experience of reverence, of happiness in your heart, and just then everything melts away and you really find this place of inner connection a remembrance that there is so much more than this materialistic realm. Like that moment, that state of consciousness, that experience of consciousness, my mind just shook because I said experience of consciousness. 
<laughs> because it is. It's a, it's a full body experience. I just haven't said that out loud before. So you can go into these and I don't think that you have to have, you know, I don't think that you have to have done the previous levels to experience just a small moment of unity consciousness because that's kind of the end goal. So anywho, that's my two cents. So let's move on. <laughs> we have, um, once we've really identified with, I am more than just my persona, I am more than my ego, and I am more than just being this mind and body, I am a part of or I am a facet in the environment. I am the environment. How cool is that? Then we're getting into where the boundary lines are blurred because we have done all of this work, this internal work, and we've looked at our traumas on each level. And now we are at a place where the boundaries dissolve. They dissolve. And we are looking at therapies such as Jungian psychology, uh, what is that, psychosynthesis, and then I think that's Maslow, that's interesting, I don't think I've ever heard of Progrof, Progrof. but Stan Grof I have heard of, and he is fabulous. So um, we're on this transpersonal level, and what happens here as the boundaries blur is that we are now playing in the realm of the collective unconscious. And in this realm, we have some really great motifs that play out, which are simply patterns that are you're experiencing in your life, but it's on a collective level. Okay, so on this collective level, you get to see your personal myth playing out. You get to see that you are a part of something so much bigger. And this is kind of where the hero's journey or the heroine's journey comes in. And you're playing in this realm that is just highly personal, but it's also highly collective. So you don't really take it all too seriously. It becomes very symbolic. It becomes a very, like, <laughs> it just feels so good because you know that it's not it's not so personal anymore. It's not so heavy anymore. It's not just me, me, me and my problems and my traumas and my experience. It, it just extends into the collectives. And wow, we're all going through this right now. And wow, this person has the same, you know, um, um, myth as I do. And they resonate with Artemis and Aphrodite as I do or as a male, like, oh, this person you know, this man uh, really personifies the, uh, well, the first one that came up was like the wise old man and the hermit and how he really honors his studies and just being a wholesome, but also very honest masculine that's supporting so many people. Okay. So Again, on this transpersonal band, boundaries dissolve and you start to see that it's more than you. <sighs> it's more than you, but we need you to do it to understand that it is more than you because then you're helping other people. Okay, so once we have really experienced this transpersonal band, there's unity consciousness. And what's on unity consciousness? Of course, this is so deeply associated with the Eastern uh, philosophy and teachings because, like, it, it's an experience. It's not, here's the paradox within unity consciousness, is that this is kind of the end goal that we're trying to get to. We are trying to, we are trying to get to it, but the paradox is that it's already happening because... It is an experience which simply needs to be expressed. So this is not about, you know, becoming the Buddha. This is not about an action of, of like, I have to achieve to be this at this hierarchical stage, it was psychologically, emotionally, mentally, whatever. It is just about behaving as such, behaving as that archetype without letting that archetype kind of consume you and make you like take you away from your humanity if that makes sense so unity consciousness is just about behaving as this crystalline christ-like energy and giving this to others like letting yourself be the light be the 
uh, changing factor in the room. Be the alchemizer at your work. You know, be this loving yet detached individual for friends to come to you and you know you can be this holding container for them because you've done the hard work and you're just behaving with this pure crystallized heart that you have really done your due diligence to receive um so now it's just kind of you are just the embodiment of this beautiful energy um, so again, unity consciousness, it's not something that we are trying to strive for and achieve for. Unity consciousness is simply the expression of the wholeness that you have acquired. So if you have any questions below, let me know. But I just wanted to share this with you because it really altered my perspective on spiritual growth and healing trauma and the different rooms or the different levels that I can go into to constantly refine myself. And I hope that you can take this and receive how you will, work with it how you will, um, and let me know in the comments below how you experience this. And I will see you in my next video. And also before I go, happy new year. It is January 1st, 2024. I'm very excited for what is to come. I'll see you soon.